Well, I guess Sean and I met in sixth grade, but I would fast forward to we were about 16, and I remember uh, our friend Will gave us a guitar, and I gave me a guitar, and I was in my garage, and I was trying to play Phoenix TX all my fall. And I had the tabs and everything, and I kept listening to it, and I tried to play it, and uh, I couldn't really. And about probably two hours go by, and then Sean shows up. And he listens to it once, looks at the tabs, and I swear to God, he fucking played it. <clears throat> right then and there. And I pretty much decided I wasn't going to play guitar. I was like, this kid's a musical genius. So I started by just picking up a guitar, messing around with it. I never really took any lessons. I've been showed things here, you know, little things here and there, like that. Uh, my dad showing me the basic chords and the acoustic. And there's the prophecy in the yearbook, Sean would go write about how we, uh, we were going to start a band, basically. It signed in Daniel's yearbook, I had mentioned something about us being in a band in the future and how we were going to make music and change our lives and other people's lives. And... Daniel, when I picked the hardest place for you to read, I felt like being an ass. Just remember Florida in two years. Then you were one, you of, my were one of my best friends. You were special to me. All our memories will be remembered. From drinking and writing songs in three days to taking a dip of winter green shoe. I could go on forever. You're going to need to keep in touch until Florida, maybe even start, start a, badass a badass band. band. I love you, man. Phoenix right at almost right after graduation and then um, Sean joins the Navy after five years of active duty and playing by myself over the past year you know year after year in different duty stations and stuff I, uh, I, don't know, I guess I got a little bit better on the guitar and Daniel was moving further and more advanced on the computer end always pretty good with the computer so I figured my part would be the computer like I would produce records and so I decided to go back to school about probably almost two years before Sean gets out of Navy. Gone without a thought, and maybe get caught in the circles again. Bluffing his hand, I'll never win. Another night alone versus one of sin. Yeah, angel, I'm all in. Sean decides he's going to move back to California, and um, so I'm like, God damn it, dude, here we go. Never gonna get to record a song with this kid. Seriously, like, I think he's moving to California that week. He just came down to basically say goodbye, and I was like, Nah, dude, we're recording a song. And so we did, and uh, we used like the crappy little amp over there, and uh, it was just a little amp, one mic, computer in my closet. The lyrics were actually a rap song that I had for probably, because I always had delusions I was going to rap. I had these lyrics that I really liked, and I actually had been making beats, trying to make the right beat for this rap song, which would become See You Next Tuesday. And I actually rapped for the first time in front of anybody, in front of Sean in the Buick listening like with the see you next tuesday lyrics daniel actually had the majority of the lyrics already put together um i think uh, i just added a few things here and there uh, the chorus was actually done by a friend of ours named tyler before Dan had had any guidance or any, uh, any help whatsoever, he was just doing it on his own. 
So we did the best with what we had, and then later on we decided that we should re-record the song uh, and the other couple songs so we could have them a more realistic, uh, what we sound like. The original take, uh, the vocals were real monotone on my behalf. Bleached and pearly whites, exceptionally fake contact, blue eyes, manicured hands that give a contact high, the brain that only provides surprise. We'll see you next Tuesday in Astronauts and Forgotten Pastures crappy. <laughs> I mean, that was the biggest, I mean, like, they were just not very good and I was almost embarrassed by them, like, I was just like, these songs are cooler than that. How much of those first songs did you both feel needed to be changed? A lot of it. A lot of it from Dan's side because he's always pushing me to, to be better and was pushing me to sing more with more emotion, you know. It's I don't know, it's I, it's not difficult, but when I transition from playing a guitar like in the garage it, and singing you know, loudly. It's just a little, you take away a couple elements, and then you throw me in a, you know, a little cute, uh, little closet space with a microphone. It's a little bit different, but that's when I close the eyes, put myself in the garage, sing in the Does your heart still bleed red? Tuesday is about this girl. She was super old though. Like I was probably 19, 20 when I knew this girl. I don't even think I was 21 yet. And uh, it was just about her and how fake she was. And what's weird is that like I still liked her for like the longest time, even though I wrote those like lyrics like perfectly bleached, pearly white, exceptionally fake, contact blue eyes, manicured hands to keep a contact high. A brain that only provides surprise, impeccable lips, spend incredible lies, silk skin for which I would die. I mean, it's just about how she's all fake and shit. And I don't know. But at the same time, I think it comes across about why I like her. Perfectly bleached, pearly whites, exceptionally fake contact, blue eyes, manicured hands that give a contact high. A brain that only provides surprise, impeccable lips. People like it. It's some some people's favorite song. I mean, I don't know. I just it was the first song I ever wrote.